Did President Joe Biden's campaign also spy on Donald Trump's campaign? Biden, my campaign. No, there's no e real evidence of that. Of course there is. No. It's all over the place. New evidence surfaces how a cybersecurity firm that the Biden campaign hired is at the center of the Durham investigation. And speaking of cyber, President Biden sends a message to Russia after a cyber attack strikes Ukraine. Plus, why questions and demands still remain in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine crisis. And later. And how you can be like David Bowie, far above the world, but in a much more luxurious spacecraft than a tin can. We'll explain the far out details next. Hello and welcome to News On. I'm Miranda Khan. Thank you so much for joining us. We all know white flags stand for we surrender. But these blue and yellow flags flying high in Ukraine are being flown to send a very different message. You can see it there on your screen. And that is to show that Ukraine is united and not afraid of Russia. Meanwhile, while President Biden may be giving some tough words to Russia and threatening economic sanctions if it does in fact invade Ukraine, the mere talk of the Russia-Ukraine conflict could cause inflation here to go even higher. Joining us live now to talk more about that is CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Good to see you as always. Good morning. So how does conflicts like these impact the market and more importantly, the bank accounts of those who are watching this program right now? Well, first of all, it definitely impacts the market because the market would sell off it as an initial reaction uh, if we had some kind of conflict with Russia. So that's point number one. We have seen some selling moves in the last couple of days since this has all happened where they've been discussing it. Nothing has really happened yet so far that we know. But as far as how it would in fact uh, affect people's pocketbooks, the price of oil would go up and the price of oil has already gone up. So you're seeing already increased prices of things across the board, food, housing, and gas, so gas is going to increase even more if in fact we get into some kind of conflict with Russia. Russia is the second highest producer of oil um, in the world. So Saudi Arabia being the first. So it would be a problem for people again where we have higher gas prices, which we already have in 2022. So inflation is already gripping the U.S. as a whole, but it is especially in certain parts of the country even more so. Take the Midwest, for example, surging well above the average rate right now. Why is that? Why are some areas being more impacted than others? Maybe some of those local places haven't just raised the prices yet because are, and some of them have, some of them haven't. I'm really not sure why they're higher in the Midwest. Personally, here in New York, we discussed this last time, I've seen 50% price increases in items like food. So I think across the board, some of the numbers are giving us where they came out the other day and said 9%, close to 10%. I even don't even think that's a correct number. I think regardless whether we get in a conflict with Russia or not, I think inflation's gonna hit double digits this year, this calendar year in 2022. It's a matter of when. Is it going to be next month? Is it going to be this summer? It's definitely going to be before the end of the year. And again, all of this affects people across the board. So even if it's affecting some areas of the country more than others, it's going to affect everyone. It has affected everyone. It really has to do with how much how much extra income you have. So say you pay your bills and after your car payment, after your food, after your housing, after after everything else that's essential, if you're someone that lives paycheck to paycheck and you don't have a lot of extra money, you're not going to be able to cover all these costs. Someone that has more disposable income that obviously earns more has extra money to pay for these things. And so it really depends on your level of income, really. Well, and let's be honest, that's that's the majority of the people here in the United States, right? I mean, we all know that from the pandemic, but the Fed had that closed door meeting Monday, but we're still waiting to hear whether or not it's going to raise interest rates. Again, this is to help offset some of the surging inflation rates. So there's been talk again about this happening next month. We're just a couple of weeks away, believe it or not, from March. Do you see that happening and by how much? They, they came out last week and said that the, they are going to raise interest rates and they're possibly going to raise interest rates one point. The market fell that day, I believe it was Thursday, and then we continued to sell off on Friday. 
Again, part of that was interest rates with the Fed and part of it was the Russian news. But anyways, they're talking about raising rates an entire point between now and July. So half a point in March and then another half a point in July. Again, this is not going to stop the problem with inflation. The main issue with inflation is the fact that we have a supply chain crisis still. And we don't have enough people back at work to make stuff. And we also don't have ways to get stuff around that we need. If people want to make stuff and buy stuff, if they can't get it delivered, that's a problem if we don't have a full uh, if we don't have a full labor force. And then also if people are trying to get items from other countries and they can't get them to make, like for example, the chips. Uh, tonight, yeah. NVIDIA reports that's a chip maker. If they can't get what they need to make what they need to sell it, they can't make money or you can't get it. So that's why the prices have gone up. So raising interest rates is not going to cut back on inflation and, again, could actually push us into a recession earlier than we might have seen it, which we may be headed to a recession anyways. So, again, all of this combined, if we get into a conflict with Russia, is problematic. Not to mention the fact that, again, we talked about this last week, China would side with Russia. That would be a problem. And, again, you know, both of them have nuclear weapons. We don't want to be in this position. We, we don't want to be in this position. There's no reason to be in this position. I don't know why. The, I listened to Biden yesterday. I don't yeah. know why he's pushing this issue. Well, uh, we are running tight on time. So you were talking about the supply and demand chain crisis uh, being a huge impact and that raising the interest rates aren't going to combat that. So speaking of which, uh, you know, this is something that helped get uh, former President Donald Trump elected, and that is to have more manufacturing come back to the United States. Well, now you have a top Republican, Rodney Davis of Illinois, trying to encourage that. And he's coming up with this whole incentive plan, and we don't have time to go all into it, but it's just basically kind of goes off of the PPP plan, uh, but using it towards businesses in order to encourage them to do that. Your thoughts, 30 seconds on this. Do you think this would work? I don't know what his plan is specifically. I have not read about that, but I know that in order to have uh, more manufacturing jobs in the U.S., you need a business-friendly cl uh, climate. And part of that is you can have a lot of hindrances to doing business in the U.S., and you can have really high taxes. As much as people say, oh, if you tax the businesses or give them low taxes, they get away with it. At the end of the day, they provide jobs to people. So we need a tax-friendly environment. And, and they raise taxes since Trump yeah. left, left office. So taxes are increased this year in 2021 for businesses. So again, we'll have to leave it there, Melissa. We're tight on time. I'm sorry. We're going to have to leave it there. We'll continue to discuss this story still ahead. Speaking of your money, we just talked about rising inflation and the Fed talking about raising your interest rates. So why does President Biden want you to spend billions of dollars to combat COVID?